Gold is money, period. When you are exchanging a dollar for a pack of gum or groceries or whatever, what are you exchanging? You're not exchanging a piece of paper. You're exchanging a gold substitute. You're exchanging the gold or silver value of that dollar for the goods and services that you're buying. And why must this be true? This is true now. It's true. It's true always because of something called the monetary regression principle. The only reason you know what prices are now is because you knew what prices are yesterday. Otherwise, prices would be completely arbitrary. And if they are completely arbitrary, then there's no way to divide goods and services. The division of labor breaks down. The purpose of money is to divide goods and services according to supply and demand. Otherwise, there's no division of labor and you can't have an economy. So you have to go back in time. So the question is, how was the dollar born? And some people could say gold standard. And, but that's not even, even that's not true. Um, the dollar was born as a silver standard, and then it was changed to a gold standard as a transfer of wealth from the middle class who owned silver to the wealthy who owned gold. But let's just say that the dollar started as a gold standard. Why? Because barter started by exchanging one thing for another thing. That's how society began, or economics began. And the thing that was most exchangeable for other things just happened to be silver and then gold later. And so even now, when you're exchanging a dollar, you're exchanging a gold substitute. It happens to be a very inflated gold substitute. And we know what happens when the, the illusion of the dollar's value of gold, when that illusion is broken, then there's a depression because that's what, that's what happened in 1933, right? Gold went from 21 to 35 as an admission by the government that this exchange rate is not real and therefore we have to change it. And then you had a big, great depression. The real price of gold, the monetary price of gold is what price would it be if everyone on the planet were to exchange all their dollars for gold right now? What would the price have to be? What would the exchange rate? It's not even a price, it's an exchange rate. What would the exchange rate between gold substitutes and gold have to be? And the answer is probably around $35,000, $40,000 to make everyone who wants gold, you know, to have it. Uh, that's the monetary price. The price that we see on the futures exchange, that's the, that's the industrial price because not everyone needs gold for industrial purposes, but everyone needs it for monetary purposes. Just they pretend that the dollar they have is gold, but uh, not, not these exchange rates. The end game, we've seen it many times in history. Exactly how it's gonna come to pass this time, I don't know, but I can imagine that it will be something like we've seen before, but global. What have we seen before in the end game? The end game is what the Austrian economist Ludwig von Mises calls the crack up boom. So we've, we know what booms are. Booms are when economic activity in fiat currency terms picks up and it looks like everyone's rich because you know the spending, the GDP goes up and blah, blah, blah. But GDP is really just another count of the money supply because if you increase the money supply, you're gonna increase the amount of dollars that are spent in an economy. It's kind of stupid. So the crack up boom is otherwise known as hyperinflation when the economy speeds up the economy. It's not the really economy, it's the, the amount of uh, money substitutes being circulated in economy speeds up to the point where the, the desire to hold cash balances as money itself falls to zero. And once the desire to hold money substitutes themselves falls to zero, then uh, people are willing to spend an infinite amount of money or infinite amount of currency, I should say, on anything just to get rid of it. So that's, that's the crack up boom. That's what we're headed for. And it doesn't matter if we're talking about central bank digital currencies or paper money or whatever. It's all the same crap. It doesn't make a difference. I mean, people make this big deal out of central bank digital currencies. And it's a big deal in the sense that it robs everyone of any privacy whatsoever. But it's all the same fiat. So when it all goes to zero, that, that's it. It's all, it's all dead. It's all the same. So um, the crack up boom is going to be something along the lines of what happened in Weimar, what happened in Zimbabwe, or what happened in any hyperinflationary country except everywhere all at the same time. And what happened then in, in Weimar, Germany, you could buy, for example, a mansion in Berlin for like four or five gold coins. So I expect the people with physical gold to be able to amass huge amounts of real resources. And that's when the purchasing power of gold and silver goes through the roof. In the initial phase, when the, when the real breakdown happens, it's going to have to be physical because all trust in all money substitutes will be broken. It's not like people are going to have this revelation, oh, I understand what money is now and I get what Rafi's saying when he talks about the monetary regression principle and they're all going to suddenly study Austrian economics and become geniuses in economic theory. That's not, that's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is the same thing that happens in every bubble. You know, whether it's Bitcoin, people chase Bitcoin because it's going up. People chase this stock, Tesla, whatever, because it's going up. People are going to chase gold and silver, not because they understand what money is, because it's going up. And it's going up because it's, it's the end game and it's money. 
So people are going to try to chase it. They're going to try to get as much physical as they can. They're going to call for delivery. There's going to be a de there's going to be a run. There's going to be you know uh, dealers going broke. They can't get the supply. And they're going to be panicked. And then the prices of everything are going to go way 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 down in terms of physical gold and silver because everyone in the world is going to want it. In the the book, the theory of money and credit, Mises says that you have to go back to exchanging physical coins. I don't think it's going to stay that way forever, but in the initial phases where prices are just off the wall and bonds are collapsing and this and that, then no one's going to accept anything for any of their services in return, goods and services in return, except for coins. So you're going to need some of that. Are you going to need like huge mansions full of it? No, because I don't think it's going to last forever until you know, someone's going to offer to store your gold and silver for some meaningful substitute, and then substitutes will come back to life and there will be more trustworthy ones and less tr trustworthy ones. That's what it should be instead of a monopoly on the substitute supply. There should be competing currencies and the, the dishonest ones will go out of business and the honest ones will live. There should be a free market and money. That's what I think is going to happen. I hope. Make sure that you're actually buying physical gold or physical silver. It doesn't really matter what kind. Uh, in, the, in the end game, when the end game really does come, ETFs are not going to help. Forget it. Whether it's Sprott or GLD, Sprott is more trustworthy, yeah. But like, if everyone's desperate and everyone calls Sprott at the same time saying, I have PSLV, I have P PHYS, please give me my gold. Wait, Sprott's gonna say, sure, here, and it's gonna mail it to you. It, it's not gonna happen, okay? I'm not saying it's not there. I'm saying you're not gonna get it. You're gonna have, you're gonna have paper gold. And what are you gonna do with it if the dollar can't buy anything? The GLD is useful if you're trying to speculate using gold, right? And I do that. I don't do it with a huge amount of money. But if you want to play the options in the gold market for speculative purposes, um, then GLD would be the one to do. If you want to buy gold, GLD is not what you want to use at all. And neither is PHYS or anything from Sprott. So gold mining stocks, it's less of a problem to have ETFs uh, because the ETFs are just baskets of shares. And there's much less of a chance that they're cheating and actually holding the shares that they say they hold. They probably hold it. The question is like, what happens to mining shares when there is an end game? And uh, what I think is going to happen and why I advocate holding mining stocks in the first place is that when the currency collapses and it will collapse to zero, uh, then gold mining companies and silver mining companies will be practically the only companies that can pay your real dividends. How? With gold and silver certificates for their product because they'll have the money and you'll be able to earn real dividends and maybe they'll, they'll mail out certificates and you can talk to your company and say, uh, here's my certificate, mail me the gold. And when things settle down, eventually you'll probably be able to get it. Um, whereas with ETFs, I don't think so because they're owned by banks. So you don't want to mess with those unless you're speculating on the gold price, which you can do, I just don't recommend it um, for an end game.